1962 and the CD Peugeot designed by Charles Deutsch, the research carried out on aerodynamics by the engineers has advanced in leaps and bounds. In the Le Mans 24 hours, it is a well-known fact that this aspect plays a crucial role because of the famous Mulsanne Strait. First of all, let's have a look at the notion of aerodynamics with Pierre. When a car is moving, air exercises a force on it. To understand this phenomenon, just put your hand out of the window in a car on the motorway and you'll feel the drag. To combat this handicap, the teams in motorsport transform this pressure into downforce, which pushes the car down onto the track to improve the grip of the tyres and the vehicle's handling in corners. Thanks, Pierre. So, now that that's clear, we're going to have a closer look at the aerodynamics of the Audi R18 e-tron Quattro. As for 2014, we have a complete new set of regulations. It took fairly long to really have the very first concept evaluated to be out on the track. Once there was an outline of the first regulations and we knew which way it would take, it was about two years uh, from the first concept uh, till we will see the car in Le Mans 2014. Hello. Hi Fred, nice to meet you. Tell me, what are the different stages involved in designing a new car, starting from a clean sheet of paper? Usually you start with a first rough layout being discussed with all the other departments. Which kind of engine do we want? Which kind of wheelbase? How do we want the car to be, uh, let's say, schemed very roughly based on this? And knowing the regulation book, we design then a first car, a first aerodynamical shape and in start investigating it, uh, its uh, performance in CFD, so on computer, uh, through uh, computational fluid dynamics, trying to make out or find out what are the problems, what are the good points, and improve this. Okay, we've already said that in 2014, the cars will use around 30% less fuel. How do the aerodynamics contribute to this? To have efficiency in aerodynamics means you have to find the perfect window in the relation between drag and downforce to have a good performing race car. Through various simulations, we try to figure out before the car goes on track that we have enough downforce to go quickly around the corner, but don't have too much drag to be quick on the straights. Do you use different aero setups depending on the duration of the race or the type of circuit? Yes, we, uh, we are forced uh, to have different aero uh, configuration because, because the, uh, it's not um, because of the difference 24 hours, 6 hours, it's a track layout. Uh, Le Mans is typically a very high speed uh, track uh, with a very high average top speed compared to the other tracks of the WEC Championship which have a lot more corners and therefore uh, we are forced to run different level of downforce. Okay, Pierre, what a Porsche and Toyota's choices? In the Toyota camp, we know that the aerodynamicists can count on a very efficient wind tunnel in the Cologne factory. At Porsche, the design office in Weissach has a great deal of experience and says that the LMP1 program is their engineer's priority. After the aerodynamics at Audi, we'll stay in Germany for our next episode and go to Porsche to talk about engines. <laughs>